Rocco will be right back. He just realized he isn't wearing pants. Watch everyday life turn into the struggle of a lifetime when you're a wallaby named Rocco. Despite spending basically my entire childhood watching Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, Rocco's Modern Life isn't a show I have strong memories of. In fact, I don't particularly remember watching it when it initially aired. My memories of watching come from around 2008 and later, when Nick would play shows like Rocco, As Told by Ginger and Ren and Stimpy from about 8pm onwards. This is a classic era Nicktoon though, so I went into this incredibly excited. The series was created by Joe Murray, who also created Camp Laszlo, and was born from an unpublished comic book idea that he reluctantly pitched to Nick as they were looking for edgier cartoonists to produce Nicktoons. The show's staff featured Steven Hillenberg, who directed episodes from season 1 to 3 and served as creative director from 1995 to 1996. After Rocco ended, Hillenberg went on to create a little underground show named SpongeBob SquarePants. The pilot episode of Rocco's Modern Life first aired in 1992, with season 1 making its Nick debut on September 18, 1993, and the final episode of the season airing on December 5 of the same year. It rated well from the beginning and garnered a large adult following thanks to a strong focus on adult humour, which actually resulted in adults making up one-fifth of the audience. They also managed to get the B-52s in for the intro song. However, that intro was used for seasons 2, 3 and 4, so it isn't present in this season. So with all of that out of the way, it's time to jump into the first season of Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life is a slice-of-life comedy centred around the titular character, and often featuring hijinks with his best friend Heffa. The first season consists of 13 episodes, with each episode being broken into two 11-minute segments. All of the characters in this show are some sort of anthropomorphic animal, with Rocco being an Australian wallaby and Heffa being a cow. This makes the fact that Rocco owns a pet dog incredibly strange. Why are all the other animals sentient and able to speak English except for his dog Spunky? Heck, even tiny insects like flies and fleas seem to be able to communicate properly with everyone else. It's kind of like how Goofy and Pluto are both dogs, but Pluto is a pet for some reason. The first thing that struck me was that the animation felt sort of ugly. This is very much the style that Nicktoons like Ren and Stimpy and Rugrats were using at the time, but this feels worse for some reason, which is weird because Rocco came two years after these shows. Aside from Heffa, the big heads who live next door to Rocco are featured semi-regularly, as well as Philbert. The big heads are the typical antagonistic neighbours that dislike Rocco, while Philbert is Rocco's friend I guess. It's kind of hard to categorise what Philbert is, because the only time he interacts with Rocco is when they're working together at the comic shop in one episode, or when Rocco runs across him at one of his various jobs. Episodes generally start off with a very simple premise like Rocco trying to lose weight or getting a credit card, but they become more off the wall as it progresses. Rocco seems to be living in poverty in most of the episodes. I found this to be an incredibly interesting and unique choice, as you don't generally see something like this in a kid's animated show. So many episodes are focused around him having no money, and we see that his house and car are falling apart. Things also get very surreal in this show. Stuff like a lava lamp being used as a TV antenna, a talking couch, and an episode where the fleas living on Spunky are basically in a sitcom, are all the norm. The show just has a brilliantly weird sense of humour, but it's still able to satirise certain things or situations perfectly. The best example of this is the episodes set in a mega mall and in an airport. It's also really good at contrasting the expectations versus reality of many situations like going to the carnival or the beach. As I mentioned earlier, the writers focused on making this show for both children and adults, and it resulted in a large adult fan base. The focus on adult humour is extremely obvious now, but it probably would have flown completely over my head as a child. Things like a fast food chain being called Choky Chicken, Rocco working as a phone sex operator, or a doctor being called Dr. Bendover probably wouldn't have been picked up by me. In one episode, Heifer literally dies and goes to hell. And there's even one episode where Heifer is watching a president get shot during a motorcade JFK style. Order now and... Oh my god, there's a burst of gunfire! It's the final game in the World Series, two outs, bases loaded on a three and two count. Despite knowing the show featured a lot of adult humour, these jokes always caught me off guard, and it gave me some of the biggest laughs. It's a wallaby's life out there. <laughs> It's Rocco's Modern Life. Fine, thank you. Monday nights at 7.30 on YTV. Hey, what is this, a sideshow? Despite Season 1 of Rocco's Modern Life being very solid, there are still a few things holding it back. One of the biggest problems with the show I found was Heffa. 
Heffer is the dumb friend, always getting Rocco into trouble, and it kind of feels like he may have been Steven Hillenburg's inspiration for creating Patrick Starr. However, Heffer quickly becomes incredibly grating. He's always screwing up Rocco's life so badly, and very rarely does he do anything to either fix the mess, or even justify why Rocco keeps being friends with him. This criticism also carries over to another point I have. By the end of the season, it starts to get a little tiresome seeing everything not go Rocco's way, especially because in many episodes, things end with him being utterly defeated, rather than getting a small win to end things on a good note. Sure, it's funny seeing a Rube Goldberg-esque series of events messing up Rocco's plans, but episodes are a little unsatisfying when it doesn't end with Rocco ending up on top. At some point, it just becomes kind of sadistic watching Rocco get tortured endlessly. One of the early episodes in the seasons is also quite creepy. Bev Bighead is tired of getting shown no love from her husband, so she starts hitting on Rocco. This comes off incredibly weird, because Rocco seems like a child or a teen because of his small stature and overall naive nature. I'm pretty sure Rocco is supposed to be an adult, considering he owns his own home and everything, but he and Heffa always just come across as people who are under 18. The whole plot of this episode just feels like it was ripped straight out of porn. Mrs. Bighead lures Rocco over to her house saying she has some odd jobs that need to be done, while she tries to seduce him the entire time. At one point they watch a documentary on the mating of cane toads together. Is this not porn? I looked it up and the Big Heads are cane toads, so she's basically just watching porn with Rocco. The episode ends with Mr. Big Head finding Rocco in a compromising position. He then kicks Rocco out and the Big Heads just have sex. <laughs> It's all so very strange for a kids show. It seems I wasn't the only one who found this episode a little weird, as Nick received complaints from parents over this episode for its sexual humour, which resulted in the episode being removed from air for the rest of the show's run. My last gripe is minor, but it appears that the episodes were put together out of order. In episode 5, Rocco is working at the local comic shop, but in episode 8, he's working at the mega comic shop, gets fired, and then ends up working at the local store by the end of the episode. It's not a huge issue, but it did confuse me quite a bit while I was watching the episode. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. It would also be remiss of me if I didn't mention the voice cast for the show. Carlos Alaraqui voices Rocco, and later teamed up with Murray for Camp Laszlo as the main character. I could immediately tell Rocco and Laszlo shared the same voice actor, as at times the voices are almost identical. Rocco also gave Tom Kenny his first big break, which directly led to him becoming the voice of Spongebob Squarepants. Non-stop Nick Dudes Weekend! Hello up there, Rocco here, just going through all the Nick Tune stuff you sent in. Ah, oh, here's a good one. It's from Ashley from Northeastern Massachusetts. She writes, Dear Nick, will Rocco ever get married? Why, yes, Ashley, I will marry you. I'd be honored. Why, I... Uh, Rocco, uh, she didn't ask you to marry her. She didn't? Uh, no. Well then, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer, Ashley. Yeah, uh, Rocco. Forget. Stay tuned for lots more Nicktoons and more of your Nicktoon stuff as Nonstop Nicktoons weekend continues. Season 1 of Rocco's Bond Life is a very solid debut for the series. The mixture of bizarre, off the wall humour with more down to earth satirising works well, and each episode offers a fresh set of situations. There were a few drawbacks, but nothing that would seriously affect my enjoyment of these 13 episodes. Rocco's Modern Life is a truly unique cartoon, and more than holds its own during a time where so many classic cartoons were airing. 